Hello everyone, Resonance here, and today I'll be doing some more Age of Empires 2 coaching. This commentary should be very helpful and unique, since I'll be focusing primarily on the perspective of one player. Thank you so much everyone for the continued support, especially for the content that I do for games beyond just AOE 2. But without further ado, let's start the replay. This coaching session is dedicated to one of my loyal viewers and Patreon supporters, ADHD is me, and all of your contributions help make videos like these possible. On the bottom side of the map, we have ADHD is me, who will be playing as the Purple Huns. And on the top half of the map, we have Mil Mascaras, who will be playing as the Blue Chinese. Today's match is going to be a 1 vs 1 on the map Arabia with the classic 1.0c balance, and for some reason I couldn't quite get the spectator overlay to work this time, but that's alright. So at the start of every game, I always like to double check what the players are actually doing with their first few actions to try and improve their overall strategy. The first thing that you should do immediately when the game starts is to kill four villagers at your town center, and that is exactly what ADHD is me did do, which is great to see. Then normally after that, if you weren't playing as the Huns because they don't have to build houses, you would want to build two houses, and then have your scout go out around your town center and try to find your sheep. You usually want to scout in a circular motion around your town center to try and catch them because they spawn in a radius around it. And then once you have more of your sheep collected, you can fan the sheep out around your town center to help assist you with scouting. When you're newer to the game and trying to get a grasp on the basics, you don't need to worry about sheep scouting because that can take away a lot of your attention. And attention is a really precious resource in Age of Empires 2 when you're starting out. Obviously, ADHD's me could have probably had his sheep underneath the town center at the start, and that would have helped him a bit, but really, again, your priority should be just making sure that your town center is always creating villagers and is never idle until you have at least 100 villagers, or it's doing something else like advancing through the ages or researching and technology. The scouting pattern from him is good, I like to see that, and again, don't need to worry about the sheep scouting when you're just getting started out. Another little tip that he's actually doing is that he's only harvesting from one sheep at a time under your town center. I would say that that's more important, and it's great to see him actually doing that because he's not losing any food to decay here. There is an idle villager on the bottom side over here, and that's just due to, I think, a slight misclick on the rally point because of this hill right there. I think this lumber camp placement is alright, uh, but yeah, he needs to task that villager over there and he does that. Okay, so he is scouting around for his boar, it looks like. Ah, there we go. Yeah, so he knew the boar was over there, and he's going to go grab it with his villager. When you're new, I just got a little bit of idle time in the center. So when you're super new, ooh, this is, this is good, though, because he's actually not having a sheep decaying underneath his town center while he's looted in the boar. I think that it's pretty difficult for a lot of newer players to actually make sure that their build order is well optimized enough to not have a sheep decaying when that happens. And you can see a great example of that during my Night Rush tutorial. But one thing here, though, is that it's actually more important to make sure that he didn't have that eh, 20 seconds or so of idle time on his town center right there while waiting for that boar lure to come there. The boar lure is just perfectly positioned, situated right underneath the foundation of this town center. But again, it just comes down to priorities. I want to make sure that everyone's thinking is on the same page. And the most important thing is keeping that town center working. So here, his focus should be on force dropping off the food from his boar hunters to just keep that town center working. Or just researching loom, yeah. So I think that if we can get Purple to just sort of recategorize his thinking and make sure that everything is oriented around the town center, then he'll be quite a strong player. But it's great to see him improve so much since my last coaching session with him. It really is remarkable. You can tell that he's following some of the build orders and concepts that I present in my tutorials. For those of you that are like super new, I, the Nightwars tutorial is more advanced and goes over a specific build order, but when you're new you don't need a build order to do well as long as you've got the fundamentals down, and that's what a lot of my other tutorials do talk about, is just the general thought process that you need to have, your priorities. Assuming that you're doing everything in the right order, Efficiency is something that you'll pick up later and will be decisive at a higher skill bracket, but if you have a larger economy and you're making the correct units for the situation, then you will win your games, even against a player who is faster than you and has a better build order. A lot of players tend to pick up a build order and then completely collapse after the build order ends because they just don't know how to play the rest of the game. So I'll be playing extra close attention here. But look at him, wow, this is nice to see. The four on wood at the start is, is always good, and I like to see the four on berries too. Some players tend to oversaturate their berries. It's not immediately clear what build order he's going for. If you open up with three on wood, sometimes that would signify a scout rush, for example. 
Now, Arabia is a map that you definitely have to master if you're playing online. I mean, it's either that or like Black Forest and Arena. Those are usually the most common ones. And it's good to see him you know, playing as the classic Huns versus Chinese. Both are pretty good civs in Arabia. Huns being one of the best ones, definitely. Because he saves so much wood on not having to build houses. So it looks like this villager here is going for a mining camp, I assume. Ah, yes, okay. This is a good mining camp placement, and I can assume by that he's going for an archer rush. Ah, here's one little thing that I don't cover that often that is important. Ooh, interesting. So his uptime to the Feudal Age is quite fast. It would be faster if he had, like, less idle time in the Dark Age. You know, he probably had around 30 seconds or so of idle time on his town center, which could be improved. But... This is a very fast feudal age. He's actually only going up with 20 villagers, so 21 population, because the additional one from the scout. And normally you would see this type of fast feudal age for something like a scout rush, when it really, really matters that you get to the feudal age as quick as possible, or something like a men-at-arms rush. Rather than an archer rush, where I usually prefer to go up at 24 villagers, that's because I think what's going to happen is he's going to get to the feudal age, and he's not quite going to have enough resources for his barracks, his archer range, and then sustaining archer production. Yeah, I think we're going to see him... Okay, he's going to put down the barracks now. He's going to start building his farms. He's even building them in the top right corner of his town center. That's great. I think it's super important when you're coaching somebody that you actually talk about the things that they do really well, too. Not just the mistakes they make, because no one is perfect. Not even the top players. And so I'm very happy to see these, like, little efficient things here. Such as the actually farming on the top right corner of your town center first, because the villagers for some reason only farm in like the bottom left corner of the farm. That never really made any sense to me, but Age of Empires 2 is a game where you scout with sheep, so... <laughs> Gameplay over realism. Uh, that one, though, I don't know if that was a feature or not, it's just the mechanic. So he's gonna build, I'm assuming, another arch range now. One thing I, I wanted to say earlier, but I get sidetracked a lot, is that he really should be scouting his opponent right now, because that's what Blue's doing, his opponent. And this is super, super essential to winning on Arabia, particularly. You need to know what your opponent is doing. On Arena, obviously, if you're scouting them like early on in the game, you're not going to get that much information. But on Arabia, he's spending so much time scouting around his base, and he's doing one hell of an efficient job at making sure he leaves no stone unturned. However, I don't like playing in the dark, personally. We have no idea what Blue is doing. And let's go quickly take a look at Blue's population. Holy idle time, Batman! What happened? <laughs> oh man, the Chinese start though is rough. I, I can relate, so... Okay, cool, so ADHD's me actually has a, a small pop advantage, that's quite nice. And his opponent is not in the feudal age yet, and so, that's, that's really reassuring to see. Jumping back into the game, there's a bit of idle time in this archer range, of course, as being built, but the speed's like something that you just pick up over time. People often ask me, you know, Renaissance 22, how do I get faster at Age of Empires 2? What kind of hotkey secret voodoo magic do you have? And I would say that pressing the H hotkey to jump to your town center really helps, as well as C or A to create a villager is the most important hotkeys. I also hotkey my scout to... One with the control one at the start of the game. This makes a huge difference. But beyond that, it just takes practice. Just takes practice. It's going to take time for you to be able to get faster with these things. And, you know, Hot King or Archer Ranges to two or something might help out a little bit. But, yeah, he's got a bit of idle time here. Like, he's not making any archers for his Archer Rush. And I've noticed there's been a bit of idle time in the Town Center. But at, it just all boils back down to the Town Center. If he's constantly making villagers, if we can just shave off this idle time... ADHD is me. 8,000 ELO. He's going to be 8,000 ELO tomorrow. Number one, top on the leaderboards, no contest. Easiest game of his life. He can probably <laughs> just... He's just going to sweep the ladder. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Hope you're about ready to lose some games. All right, so... <laughs> really, it does make a big difference. He's making some archers now, which is great. He's got the double ranges up. He could have been producing archers a bit earlier again, and speed would help a little bit when you're trying to rush your opponent. Let's see what kind of vision he's got. What, what's he cooking in the oven? Uh, that was some good, some good sweeping action over there. Manages to find the lumber camp and the forge bushes, two locations he needs to pressure. He has not found his opponent's primary gold mine, though, which is also one that you want to pressure. He hasn't seen the secondary lumber camp either. So when exactly should you be scouting your opponent aggressively, right? Well, I'd say somewhere between, like, five to eight minutes is when you want to start looking for your opponent, and then you would try and walk, like, directly opposite to you, and then just go around the map like this, if that if that helps you in any way whatsoever. Now, excuse me, he's looping around, gold mine detected. All right, like a heat-seeking missile, let's see. See those Hun's archers, ooh, will he run straight into the Death Star? No, 
His opponent didn't garrison in time. Good reaction, by the way, on ADHD's me. You saw he actually, he didn't ring the town bell, which causes a lot of idle time on your villagers. Instead, he just dragged a box over his villagers that were farming, put them in the town center, and the enemy scout walked by to get some free chip damage on that. That will help out quite a bit. Now, I've noticed that his opponent seems to be going for some sort of like fast castle age build order, it looks like, almost at a glance, and yet is not. He's, he's actually going for a scout rush, but he's in no rush to get these scouts out, it seems. And so this will... The thing is that ADHD's me is at a disadvantage as when it comes to units due to the two pierce armor that the scout has, and it's just very, very strong combat stats. But on the flip side, ADHD's me by going for archers means he can get to the castle age in more reasonable time frame. Look at these stockpiled resources, it's pretty nice. Uh, and also, I would say that this scout rush came out just a bit too slow. So we'll clean up these archers. Uh, well, okay, so he's kind of he's in a tough situation right now. What do, what do you do? You see these scouts closing in. Do you focus down the villagers, or do you focus down the scouts? Well, you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Really, what he should have done here is, it's all easier in retrospect, is he needed more information. He needed to scout his opponent. Does he know that the stable exists? No, he doesn't. Although, to his credit, and this is important, we have to look at the vision. Their blue's stable makes no sense, especially if you're going for a scout rush. Uh, he's actually built it... I, I mean, maybe it makes some sense that he's built it at the back over here, but normally you would build it, you know, near the front uh, to help protect your main gold mine, for example, because ADHD is me just walked around these houses. You could say that he's putting it in the back to try and hide the fact that he has scouts, but it, this strategy is about the speed. I think this blacksmith probably should have been an archer range or something like that, and then the blacksmith would come next, but, you know, just different strokes for different blokes. I like this watchtower placement from Blue, because this, again, puts Purple in a situation where he just can't do anything. If you attack the villagers, eh, you know, could he have killed one villager? Maybe, but otherwise he's getting some chip damage on the scouts. I would say in this situation, the best thing to do would have been to not end up boxing himself in like this, in a situation where he could end up losing all of his archers, because the amount of archers that he has is going to be really important. There's a threshold that you get when you have enough archers that you can actually just pick off a unit. I'd say, though, like, hitting the scouts, I think, is slightly more important than hitting the villagers here, because you don't want to be at a huge military deficit, because these archers aren't going to escape. They're just not going to. Most of them are going to die from the watchtower, so I think I'd probably attack the scouts, get them as weak as possible. Let's see if he focus fires down the low HP scouts. This is tricky, because it requires you to actually constantly... Check that T-Station, by the way. It requires you to actually click on the opponent's units to know how much health they have, See, here the scout was at 1 HP the entire time, and it could have been killed, and that just takes practice. That's something I wouldn't worry too much about if you're new, and Arabian can be quite unforgiving. Oh no! The Spearman, he's running straight into the tower. That's that's no good. Now, Spearman, do a ton of damage to a scout cavalry. Absolute ton of damage. So I like that he ended up making a Spearman, and now he's going to the Castle Age right now. And this is what I was talking about with this Archer opening, and why I like this strategy so much from ADHD is me, because he's going to get to the Castle Age way faster than his opponent. Yeah, we take a look at his economy, that's 80 food of Scout. That's, that's going to take him a while. It's going to take him a while. And the whole point of a Scout Rush is for map control, which he does have now, and also the speed, you know, being able to get in there and do damage to your opponent before he's an adequately sized military force. Blue might not quite get in here in time, and it's good to see purple actually walling up in anticipation of the scouts coming in. This villager's most certainly going to die. This is an interesting little outpost, by the way, just to catch it in case ADHD is maybe was like looping around the backside of Blue's base. That would have been that's kind of interesting. Uh, it's a little kind of a waste of stone in some respects, but you know. And yeah, here comes the double ranges. This is fine, and then he'll be able to mine gold again. Uh, ADHD's me got a lot of idle time on Blue. So purple, so good on him. Good enough. Now the scouts are coming in here, completely zoning purple off of his gold. And so, yeah. Well, he's got 600 gold in the bank, so he'll actually be fine. Mm, why are all these villagers idle? May have been a misclick. I just realized, he doesn't have a second lumber camp. Objection! <laughs> second lumber camp at this point in the game. Just realized it's like 20 minutes in. I don't know if he's got double bid axe or not, but he definitely needs a uh, wheelbarrow double bid axe. Bow saw is one of the first things you should get when you get to the castle age, and ooh, is he going to send these villagers uphill? Gotta watch out for that hill advantage. Plus one defense, good decision here from Blue to better deal with those archers. And yeah, any issues me. Purple's just getting zoned off all of his resources. He's got that crossbowman upgrade, I don't know how many archers he has left or what his general game plan is. I don't know if it's just Spearman City, but it looks like it's going to be Spearman City. Yeah, ooh, he's got all this idle time in his town center. All of it. I think if he had a secondary lumber camp, it would help out quite a bit. 
and he just needs to retask these guys to wood. So when you're getting zoned like this off your lumber camp, what should you do? Get the straggler trees, the ones that are closer to your town center, because villagers will be safer in the meantime. And he just really needs to get that wood income going so he can make some more spearmen. Should he get the pikemen upgrade in this situation? I don't think it's worth the 215 food and 90 gold for that, uh, just to take out these scouts. I mean, maybe he could. And with the bloodlines, actually, these scouts live an extra attack from the spearmen before they die. So it goes up to four hits instead of three, and that's that's pretty significant. So these are some swole scouts. But getting forging and and scale barring armor and bloodlines, all those things are going to really slow down Blue's castle timing. So we're at 23 minutes in the game, and we go to Blue's perspective. Yeah, he's nowhere near it. So now we're in... So this is one of the many reasons why I love the Conqueror's Balance so much, is that even though you don't see that much Civ variety, we do see a lot of variety in viable strategies, and I think there's a good balance between defensive and offensive play in that we get to see this great sort of yin-yang thing where these players... Holy shit, when did he do this? <laughs> what? You know, you get to see this great balance of usually there's like a player on the offensive and then a player on the defensive. And the defensive player actually has good counterplay, whereas in the expansions, at least as of this recording, there's an awful lot of towers. Okay, so the Spearman should be able to pick off these... Ooh, he's got the forging upgrade, nice. Should be able to pick off these scouts pretty quickly. The forging upgrade matters a bit here because you kill the villagers in four hits instead of five because they've got that one melee armor and four to HP, so you're doing 10 damage a hit now with forging. But you do kind of want the plus one defense on the flip side, so it's a, it's a trade off, right? To be able to take more arrow shots, and bloodlines can be helpful there too. So, really, I would say that ADHD is just, is me, is just a bit distracted right now, and that his town center has been idle for a while. He needs to make. He needs to make sure that his eco is back on track, and he's just dealing with a lot of things at the same time. But that's what makes Age of Empires 2 so crazy. I don't know when and how he did this at all, and, and necessarily why, uh, but I'll take it. I was wondering, like, what was he spending his money on, and where was his attention? <laughs> Shouldn't have been closer attention to this, but I think it's more valuable for the coaching if I have a genuine reaction to the things I'm seeing, and I gotta say, this is clever, because I don't think his opponent has seen this yet. But was this necessary? You know, weird flex, but okay. <laughs> I don't know. Because right now he's getting owned at home, and he wouldn't be getting owned at home if he didn't flex. Because <laughs> you're hiding the stable from your opponent, but this is the type of thing that I would like to do to my opponent on a Black Forest type map. Here, I feel like he needs to use the knights at home to actually defend his base a bit. Uh, he definitely wanted the surprise element. He actually kills the watchtower, the madman. And here you would want to focus fire down the spearmen if you can, but if it means that your knights end up spending too much time walking, then you don't want to do it. If they end up doing this sort of, like, dance, you, you don't want to, because they're going to take too many spear attacks. Yeah, his knights all get cleaned up here. He blew up a watchtower, he's forcing a ton of idle time. And I like that the players in here actually have, like, a realistic, obtainable skill level, something that everyone here can you know, relate to and hopefully uh, surpass at some point. That's the goal. That's the goal. And it's just great to see how much ADHD as me has improved. I mean, this is a huge expanding brain play, but I would say that when you're new, as I say on the ResQuote subreddit, when you're new, you don't need to worry about being faker yet. That can come later. The big plays come later. At the start, focus on the fundamentals. And I would say that better safe than sorry. He lost all these villagers. He has no gold income, and he cannot sustain night production anymore. Obviously easier to say in retrospect, but... I would have just built the stable in my own base, so that way I could prioritize defending my own economy, and then gone forward with the knights. Because the element of surprise, we can see while it was nice and he did manage to blow up a watchtower, it didn't actually accomplish that much. Although it did throw Blue off his groove, which does matter quite a bit. The heavy stone mining signifies to me he might be interested in a castle when he gets to the castle lodge, but we'll see. How's he doing? Ooh. So yeah, his economy is crippled, but the thing is, is that right now, you're in the castle age. You probably could have an eco lead. So, in order to take advantage of that, I would make sure to defend your own base. Your opponent is in the feudal age still. So yeah, you want to kind of keep him in the feudal age, sure. But I, I just think I would have defended against those scouts earlier. Oh my god, he built a fort archer range too. I think that he is super alpha. I respect that. <laughs> and man, Blue did not expect that either. And there's there's a lot of value to that, I think and actually throwing your opponent off their game plan. The market's an interesting choice. I don't know why this is a market and not a town center. Because it's not like he's got the gold. I think he built this market because he was worried he wouldn't be able to like secure his gold mine and actually be able to do a Fortnite production. It's an interesting thought. Good of him to actually replace his lumber camp. You want to do that when the tree line's about 
four plus tiles away from the lumber camp. Otherwise, your villagers get so much idle time as they are just doing that cardio. I don't know what this word archery range is supposed to accomplish necessarily. And now the surprise knights, I think, is a, is a cool play. It's definitely an option for the Huns. I mean, part of me was like. Uh, I, I get why he did that, right? Because if you go for the crossbowman bodkin arrow, you know, timing attack, then he does risk getting blown to bits by those bloodline scouts that happen to have the all the upgrades from the feudal age. So I, I get that. And the surprise knights can do quite a bit of damage, but when your opponent already has forging, he's already got all these spearmen. Yeah, he didn't know about the spearmen, but I think I I would have gone maybe for at least the stableman met my own base, just to clear out those scouts first. Because if you're in the castle age and your opponent's in the feudal age, then you're confident that you can pull out an eco advantage, should you manage to keep your own economy in one piece, rather than them both kind of being on the same footing. Like, Blue's score's actually higher, despite him still being in the feudal age and not able to advance yet. And now he is advancing. You could argue, of course, that Blue would have gotten to the castle age a lot sooner if he wasn't this heavily distracted by that knight play, and I agree, I just think that you could have distracted him with those knights after defending yourself. I don't think he would have had enough time to react either way. And yes, the secondary town center is coming down. This is great. I really love seeing matches like these, as opposed to ones where like players are like so overly optimized on their like rush build order and completely fall to pieces with their priorities. Because Purple is a player that clearly has not lost his passion for Age of Empires 2, and helps make, you know, when I do these these commentaries or coaching, like, this is what I like to see. This is a guy that is not afraid to, you know, play aggressively in an interesting way, without just spamming <laughs> watchtowers mindlessly, and also has, like, the fundamentals down. Like, he's clearly been, he's clearly been watching my content, he knows what he's doing, and I love to see that. Because he prioritizes, like, one of his first Castle Age buildings was that secondary town center. That is what I like to see. I love that second town center. Holy shit, is this opponent going to call GG already? <laughs> I don't think that's necessary, but all right. Wait, does he not realize he's got 500 score lead? <laughs> I'll post this anyway so you all get some extra content. I didn't know the game was going to be this short. I, but, <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to, just trying to get back to the community, man. So, obviously, at this point of the game, Purple could have built, you know, he can build, like, another town center if he wants. He can do, like, anything. The world is his oyster. He's transitioning into Cav Archers. I think... Ah! He forgot the Fletching Upgrade. That's another thing you could grab. I don't know if he has Bosaw. You know, little things like that. I'd like to see... <laughs> oh! Purple, I love you, man. I love you, excuse me. First, I got, like, the two-hour epic slugfest, and then here I get... Uh, you know, a slightly too short game, but I am impressed at the improvement. I am. And for those of you who are hoping for something a little bit longer and closer, I don't think it needs to be this long epic slugfest every time. People are busy. And also, not every game is going to be like this. Sometimes you just stomp somebody. And I think there was a lot that can be learned from this anyway, because it's brief too. So, I enjoyed this one. <laughs> I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> My goodness. What a... Interesting set of diverging play styles. I mean, let's take a let's take a look at blue for a minute over here, and I think someone made too many farms. So, okay, players do this all the time at a way higher skill bracket. You see this every five minutes. It's just another Tuesday that I see this. <laughs> so, what do you do when you build too many farms because you don't have enough food? Because you're going for scouts early or something like that, and you got all your feudal age upgrades, and you want to get to the castle age sometime before 2020. What do you do? <laughs> so if someone's gonna watch this later in 2020, I'm gonna be like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the year is 20XX. You're still not in the castle age. What do you do? You actually just... You don't, like, delete the farms. You don't delete the villagers. You're masochist. You just... You drag a box around some of your extra farmers, and you just send them to somewhere else. You just task them to the resources you need, which in this case, you know, you even need gold. But I guess this gold mine's not safe. You task them to a straggler tree or something. Uh, you know, he honestly, he could have lived if he had, like, another watchtower or not a thousand food in the bank or he had a market. He could use that for other military units. He actually got the pikeman upgrade. You know, just, let's just be real. Let's be real for one second here. Did Blue need to resign there? Actually, not really. And this is a big thing that will improve a lot of players' play. I would say that besides your town center idle time, honestly, attitude is everything. Good on this AGG, by the way. But really, like, attitude wins games, even in one versus ones. I can't tell you how many players I've seen that are held back that are of a, like, way higher skill level. 
but they are held back, and they're never going to make any progress because their attitude sucks in some way. And not to say that Blue's one of these guys, but there are a lot of guys like this who just resign at the drop of a hat, and that is really troubling. Or someone who's, like, super stubborn with advice and doesn't take it, and then, therefore, they're just not going to improve. You have to actually be critical of yourself and be able to actually objectively analyze your own losses and distance yourself from that if you want to improve and be polite and courteous to your teammates rather than just like flaring them constantly and saying start the game already you have to communicate patience is a virtue and you'd be shocked at how many games you're going to win purely off not being a terrible person and now go to blue to say gg but he did resign a bit early like Score isn't everything either. Like, I'm not saying that you should resign if you're at a significant score disadvantage or at a significant advantage. But when there's a 500 score discrepancy and you just got your butt kicked by ADHD is me's army, then that means you're still in this game. Blue could have potentially staged a comeback. Somewhere, somehow, he got the pikeman upgrade and he's got plus one attack. Holy crap. He could maybe repel these knights. <laughs> He could make some skirmishers. Your boy could take some of his farmers off the farms and send them to any other resource. He could build a market. He could get a mangonel out. The, the world is Blue's oyster at this point. He hasn't lost yet. And it takes practice to figure out when you've won or lost. And yeah, I am padding out the end a little bit just to give more valuable advice to both Blue, Purple, and anyone watching, but also to obfuscate the actual ending length of the game. Hopefully, you all enjoyed my commentary. As always, I hope to see you all at my weekly Twitch TV live streams at twitch.tv slash resonance22. And I would love it if you could follow me on my social media, Twitter and Facebook. Thank you so much to everybody on YouTube, Twitch, and Patreon for all the loyal support. It really means a lot to me. And let me know if you learned anything from this replay. Was it short? Yeah. Should you enjoy it anyway? Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, uh, this, uh... A little bit of a premature resignation, I think, from Blue. Like, 47 to 43 population. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, just building other barracks. The game's not over yet. Yeah, he's in trouble, but you gotta look at your opponent's upgrades and everything and, and see that the military deficit isn't that big. But I, I was confident that ADHD's me would probably pull that out in the end due to superior decision-making. And that's why we're here, is for that superior decision-making. Nice. All right. GG well played. To the achievements menu. Do 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 do. Wow, yeah, see, I mean, Blue even had a positive KD. He did, yeah. Similar largest army. Hmm. Going for that watchtower like that was an interesting play, because it left those gold miners like super vulnerable later to the cavalry archers, so that's kind of an expanding brand play from purple. I like that one. But look at this. Look at this eco. Like I think Blue, he had a little bit of time. Think about it this way. Sure, you could resign early and then just immediately hop into the next game. Or you could spend the additional two minutes just to see. Just to see if you've really lost yet. Because if you do end up winning, then you just saved yourself another hour. So I'd say, stick the game a little extra long. This doesn't mean wall your villagers in the corner. <laughs> just sit there all day wasting people's time, but it, it does mean play it out a little longer because he actually had a higher villager high. So basically, if we can just take this purple guy, we all send him our energy, and we get him to press that H key on the keyboard, press that C or A or whatever his villager hot key is, and reduce the idle time in his town center a bit, he gets like a just a, just a bit stronger economy. Oh, he's going to be slaying some fools. Keep an eye on this player. Up and coming, young doubt. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Hope you all enjoyed my commentary, as always, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Once again, I really appreciate the support from everyone, especially for the content to do for Games Beyond Just Day Week 2. I've been doing this for over seven and a half years at this point, and there's only so much I can cover in Age of Empires 2, and it's really important that we expose people to A Week 2 from a wide variety of other gaming communities as well. And I just like to work on things I'm passionate about, so for those of you who actually take the time to humor me and check out the other stuff I do, you're seriously a real hero. Alright, cheers everybody, and happy holidays.